Jim, let me know. Uh, yeah, one second. Good. Go ahead, Chuck. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Tonight is Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. And we are holding this meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order and it's a virtual meeting. Ellen, can we have roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Mr. Cassio? Happy holidays, Ellen. I'm here. Thank you. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Present. Mr. Lesser? Here and happy holidays, Ellen. Thank you. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson, Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Tiago Wynn. Here. All present. Thank you, Helen. Would Ms. Harris lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Sure. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Moving on to approval of the minutes of previous meetings. Do I have a motion to approve the December 8th, 2020 regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Ed? So moved. So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> Third. You're out. Any, any comments or questions? John first. Seeing none, with a motion on the table and a second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to public comment. Just a reminder, please state your name and address and you have five minutes. And there's no emails tonight, so we can go straight to the phones, Mr. Emmett. Yes, we have a uh, caller, 914-522-5496 uh, in the meeting. Go ahead, caller. Yes, hello. My name is Michelle Furman, and I'm concerned with the changing of the Wednesday schedule by taking away the asynchronized teaching. We're taking away time from the students who are getting one-to-one -one support and special needs programming during that time. Um, so um, this will put these children at a disadvantage and will take away the opportunities that they used to have when they had after school programming that would give tutoring and lunchtime tutoring that they no longer have. So please take this in consideration when making decisions about planning the schedule for the future. Thank you. Could we get your address for the record, please? Yep, 35 Deerfield. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Emmett, anyone else on the phone? No one else on the phone, Mr. Carey. All right, public comment is now over. Communications, Mr. Emmett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, these virtual meetings have, have done, unfortunately, is taken away the staff student recognition. Um, that was one of the highlights of our in-person board meetings where we could have uh, staff and students come in and uh, show us what they were doing. And uh, while we have had to go virtual, I certainly want to recognize someone uh, from Weathersfield High School who I am extraordinarily proud of, and that is uh, our student Mia Summers. Uh, Mia Summers has been selected to participate in the uh, CMEA Nationals, uh, and she will be singing coming up in March. Although this is virtual, um, this is a tremendous, tremendous um, accomplishment. To audition, Mia had to learn an Italian aria designated by CMEA in the soprano range. They took a look at her presentation, interpretation of the language, pronunciation, vowel placement um, that's appropriate for the Italian language. They also looked at her understanding of the meaning of the words as she sings. 
Beyond that, they also looked for appropriate singing skills, such as a dropped jaw and proper breathing. All of these were scored on a rubric. The Italian aria and scales needed to be presented on video this year due to COVID-19. The video needed to be unedited and in one single take. Having had the opportunity to see it, um, it was stunning, absolutely stunning. To give you an idea of her level, the cutoff score for acceptance was 129. The top score was 198. Mia scored 185. This is most unusual uh, for most students, especially sopranos. Most auditions are soprano. So Mia, excellent work. As Mr. Rio says, we should be very proud of her. She will now move on to create a video presentation for all state under those guidelines, which are very similar. So on behalf of the district, Mia Summers, congratulations and best of luck to you. Um, also want to give a shout out to uh, the Hunger Project. I had the opportunity yesterday uh, to be here at Town Hall as we had a group of students along with teacher John Sand uh, deliver uh, 3,000 meals uh, to our food bank. Uh, this was a project that's been going on at Weathersfield High School on a yearly basis. And uh, in spite of the pandemic, the group got together, socially distanced and with masks on, and built these meals and delivered them yesterday. So um, again, I think it's part of the spirit of the community and uh, working very hard to make sure that those uh, that need have the ability to uh, get what they need. So uh, again, thank you to the Hunger Project and John Sand over at Weathersfield High School. Uh, speaking of uh, hunger, I certainly want to make sure that everybody is aware that in spite of the fact we are um, looking at vacation next week, uh, the food service department will be serving free meals during the winter break. This will happen from Monday, December 28th through Thursday, December 31st. All children ages 18 and under are eligible for free breakfast and lunch, even if they aren't in school. Again, pickup will be at Weathersfield High School at the J Street entrance, and those hours are from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. There's an order form uh, that is available on the website. Uh, any questions that you have, please reach out to Chef Bobby at 860-571-8222. So I'm very pleased to know that we'll be offering meals over the vacation. A couple of other items for you. Um, as you have likely seen, the uh, communications continue to come out with regard to uh, positive cases in the district. Um, as of today, our dashboard uh, shows that we are at 102 positive cases, 83 students and 19 staff members. Um, we currently have 123 uh, quarantined, 99 students and 24 staff members. Again, as we enter the holiday season, we know full well that uh, there are some people who will be traveling. Um, this evening in a uh, communication, I did send out the updated travel advisory. If you are traveling, please make sure that you are looking at the obligations for that travel advisory. I had a conversation with a parent earlier this week. Um, that travel advisory comes from the state, it's the State Department of Public Health. It is something that the district is following under the state guidance. Um, also, in addition to that, just to let everybody know, the uh, CDC, along with the Department of Public Health, have changed the quarantine guidelines. Um, we have been typically quarantining for a total of 14 days. Uh, we now have the flexibility to be able to quarantine for 10 or 7 with a negative test. Um, the district, in consultation with the DPH, the Central Connecticut Health District, as well as our nursing supervisor, Clo Browski, we will be moving forward with a standard 10 day quarantine. So this should get students and staff back into the buildings a little bit more quickly. Uh, Clo does remind everyone when we go to that 10 day quarantine to make sure from days 11 through 14, we're still monitoring for symptoms. I also wanna to reiterate to everybody again, as I have in my previous communications, if you are sick, if you are symptomatic, please stay home. If you are pending a test, please stay home. The domino effect here is if we have students coming in who are symptomatic to test positive, we end up having to increase the number of people we have to quarantine. So for example, one positive case yesterday ended up causing the quarantine of 21 students and five staff. So let's please, please, please be diligent about making sure if you are symptomatic, stay home. Um, with regard to the learning model, we also included today in the communication the uh, 
schedule for the month of January. Right now, at this point in time, we're looking to reopen on Monday, January 4th in the hybrid model. Uh, I will say, as I did in the communication, we are going to look right after vacation at how we can increase the amount of in-person learning. So that is something we'll be taking a look at um, right after vacation. Um, we are going to continue to monitor the uh, positivity rate right now in Weathersfield. The uh, average cases, we were up to 99.4. It's one of the highest rates in the state. So it's certainly something we have to look at in terms of our planning for the future. But uh, we remain committed to making sure we bring kids back in in as healthy and safe a manner as we possibly can. Uh, and with that, that is communications this evening. Again, I wish everybody a happy holiday season. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. Mr. Michaels, I believe you have a motion for us. Thank you, Mr. Carey. <clears throat> I'd like to move that the Weatherfield Board of Education approve a budget transfer for fiscal year 2021 per the attached memo from Mr. Kazaka to Mr. Emmett. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Any comments or discussions, Mr. Kazaka, uh, Mr. Nope, wrong person. Mr. Kazaka, would you like to give some background? Sure. So this was a discussion at the finance subcommittee meeting and the board received the proposal in their Friday packet. We are looking to purchase 800 Chromebooks at this time, including licenses. And we're going to use a combination of funding from the CARES Federal Act and the existing balance in our IT equipment budget. And from our projected current year savings, we're going to transfer $105,000 to the IT budget to complete the purchase. And this will also help offset the 21-22 budget where we will not have this purchase implemented. We will just have the existing lease number. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Kerry. Just wondering if we could get sort of a high overview of what we can expect in the district in the next few years, given that last year we did a uh, lease of the, the 2000 Chromebooks and now this purchase this year, what does the next few years look like for the district? Certainly, great question, Mr. Michaels. Thank you very much. I have on with us this evening, uh, members of our tech team. We have uh, Sarah Harris, uh, Instructional Supervisor for Technology. Uh, we also have on the uh, IT side, the nuts and bolts side, we have both uh, Jim DeReagan as well as Mr. Jeff Telke. So, Sarah? Absolutely. Uh, no, that is a great question, Mr. Michaels. So um, as, as we shared with the board uh, last February, um, we've developed a multi-year um, purchase cycle for our Chromebooks that will allow us to ensure that we have Chromebooks that are in working order for the students. Um, we do know that our Chromebooks have a, uh, a life cycle. Um, and at the, the conclusion of their lifespan, we want to make sure that we are able to update those Chromebooks so they continue to run all of the learning platforms um, for students across the district. Um, so for next year, our initial uh, proposal as of last year was that we would purchase 650 Chromebooks in addition to our uh, annual lease payment for the 21-22 school year. Um, we are able to, if we are able to purchase those now, we will not have that 650 Chromebook purchase for the 21-22 school year. And following that school year, we will resume the uh, planned uh, cycle that we prepared, uh, that we proposed last year. So we will have one more year of our annual lease payment um, along with 650 Chromebooks per year uh, through the 24-25 school year. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Lesser, go ahead. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, first, uh, Sarah, Jeff, and Jim, thank you for all the great work you're doing. Uh, you guys have really been amazing. And if this was 10 or 15 years ago, I don't know how we would have delivered education to our students. There just would have been no way, I don't think. So thank you for all the great efforts that, that you've done. So my question is around the, the numbers as well. So 650 new Chromebooks, I understand 300 of them are for the transition of second graders going from an iPad to a Chromebook, and maybe you can comment on that and if we anticipate going lower, but how did we get to 800 from 650? I'm fully supportive of this. We need it. It's great. And again, appreciate all you've done, uh, but maybe you can uh, go through those numbers a little bit in a little bit more depth. 
Absolutely. So first, uh, you mentioned, Mr. Lesser, the, the 300 um, touchscreen Chromebooks for our second graders, and that's something we are uh, very excited about for next year because we do recognize um, that our second graders are, are developmentally young, um, and as they make that transition to the Chrome for the edu uh, Google for Education Chrome platform, um, it is a transition for them from the iPads. Um, the touchscreen Chromebooks will allow our students to transition to that Google for Education platform while still retaining the accessibility of a touchscreen device. Um, I, something we learned this year as we watched our second graders jump head on with our second grade teachers into the, the Google for Education platform was that the kids could do it. They did a great job but it was very challenging for some of our, our second grade learners um, to begin learning that new platform while also learning how to use a touch screen, uh, sorry, also learning how to use a touch pad, um, the track pad on a Chromebook. And that is, that is a, a fine motor skill um, that is challenging for some of our early second graders. So that that um, is, is why we're looking to provide a transitional year for our students where they will have the opportunity to begin using and really dive into the, the Google for Education platform while still having um, the touch screen that they've become accustomed to in kindergarten and first grade. Um, as we look to next year, we, we initially planned for 650 devices, um, but that, that plan um, was put into place at a time before we had any, any idea what, what would happen in the next um, year, of course. And so um, we have now Chromebooks and iPads in the hands of every student in the district going back and forth. So we recognize um, that although that's a wonderful thing and makes learning accessible during this time, it also put some challenges um, on the devices since we do recognize that those devices are, are having more wear and tear. Um, they are requiring uh, significantly more processor speed as we are using them in ways we never imagined um, with near constant Google Meets on some of those devices all day, every day. So our goal in increasing from 650 to 800 is to ensure that we can meet the needs of our students and our teachers um, with the optimal devices to, to meet the current learning needs um, in the environment that we're currently living in. Got it, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, any other cool questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Ms. Granado. Um, Sierra, I just was curious about any other equipment that teachers may be looking at, um, such as web cameras, um, if we continue with any sort of remote learning. Um, have you thought of that for the future? Yeah, so we, we actually, over the past several months, um, Mrs. Granada, we've had the opportunity through uh, CARES Act funds um, to purchase um, webcams for any teacher in the district who needed a webcam, along with document cameras, particularly for some of our elementary teachers, um, as that was able to make uh, teaching math and text for some of our youngest learners uh, more accessible. So teachers do have webcams across um, all seven of our schools. Oh, good, good. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Seeing none with a mo uh, no, seeing none with a motion on the table. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstention. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Next action item, Mr. Castle, you have a motion for us. I certainly do. I've got three of them. Uh, recommended motion that the Weatherfield Board of Education approve an extension to the current unpaid leave of absence for ID 906548 beyond the previously approved four months of leave granted. This leave falls under the provision of Article 5.3.3 of the current agreement between the Wethersfield Board of Education and the Wethersfield Federation of Teachers. This request is for an extended unpaid leave beginning on January 4th, 2021 and continuing through June 30th, 2021 of the current school year. Do we have a second? A second. second. Okay, thank you. Um, any background, Mr. Emmett or Mr. Donahue? Yeah, this uh, is a uh, request that is extended. This has come before you before. Um, we did have a conversation with the building administrator. Uh, the building administrator has a sub in place for this particular uh, position and feels comfortable moving forward with that sub for the remainder of the year. From a budgetary standpoint, this is an unpaid leave, so it will not have a uh, impact on the budget. Um, so um, we are supportive of that from the administrative realm. Thank you, any questions? Okay, with a motion and a second on the table, all in favor say aye. 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 Abstentions? 
Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Cassio. Uh, the second recommended motion 3A, move that Mothersfield Board of Education approve an extension to the current unpaid leave of absence for ID number 905406 beyond the previously approved four months of unpaid leave granted by the superintendent and Board of Education. This request is an extended unpaid leave beginning on January 4th, 2021 and continuing through June 30th, 2021 of this current school year. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right, Mr. Emery, you want to give background or similar background? This is similar background. Each of these are. Okay, excellent. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Cassio. Yes, recommended motion 3B, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve an extension to the current unpaid leave of absence for ID number 906520 beyond the previously approved four months of the unpaid leave granted by the superintendent and the Board of Education. This leave falls under the provision of article 11, section E of the current agreement between Weathersfield Board of Education and the CSEA slash SEIU local 2001. This request is for an extended unpaid leave beginning on January 4th, 2021 and continuing through June 30th, 2021 of the current school year. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Was that Mr. Riley that seconded or um, Mr. Mr. Michaels? Riley. Yes, Mr. Thank Riley. You. No problem. Thank you. Moving on to reports and discussions. Please check your calendars. There are some subcommittee meetings coming up after the new year. And if you can't make it, please let the chair of the committee know. Meetings held. Finance and operations. Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Mr. Carey. We met this evening. Um, just an update as to where we are with the budget. We are currently $623,734 under budget. Um, that is up about $77,000 from the previous month. Um, we also talked about a budget timeline looking at the end of January, early February this year, uh, waiting on some stuff on the town side for them to finish up their budget stuff so that we can go in and put our stuff in. So end of January, early February, um, we'll start that process. Um, I had something else, but I don't know where I know it is. Um, and then we had a productive conversation about the uh, Chromebook purchase that we just approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Upcoming meetings, we have the Weathers for the Early Childhood Collabor Collaborative, the WEC, on 1-11-21 at 4.30 p.m. There is no unfinished business. Public comment. If, you, if you're here to make public comment, please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Mr. Emmett, anyone on the phones? I have no one on the phone, Mr. Carey. Thank you. Moving on to board comment. Any board members wishing to make comment? Ms. Paradise. Um, I just have two. One clarification. Mike, um, I read your travel um, piece you sent us today and I looked, you know, I, I hit that link. And just what you said, the the, uh, the CDC is now saying 10 days quarantine and the kid could back, come back to school or seven days with a negative test. Do we approve both ways or are we just taking the 10 day, Mike? We, we're looking at the 10 day, Elaine. And, and okay, here's just for clarification. Yeah. I've what, read the yeah, what we're tending to find with regard to tests, especially oh, okay. PCR tests, it's getting them scheduled and getting the results back. So with the seven day quarantine, you wouldn't be able to take the test until after day five. Right? Oh, okay. five. And by the okay. time a PCR test is coming back, we're yeah. finding them coming back anywhere between two and four, even five days. Mm -hmm. so you would already be up at the 10 day mark. So we're gonna standardize and just go with the 10 day. And I did make okay. sure that uh, I got some feedback from both the DPH and CCHD with regard to that. So they were both supportive of the 10 day. Okay, that, that's just clarification for me. Uh, second thing I had quick was, um, 
that you went to Wednesday's um, synchrono, synchronous learning. Did I say that right? On Wednesdays for K to eight, correct? What I read on the calendar. K to eight is going to be synchronous and synchronized learning for the teacher in front of the screen. Yes. On Wednesday, correct? Now looking at Wednesdays in the month of January, right. starting on January 13th, we're looking right. at synchronous experience for students in grades K through eight. And then at the semester break on January 27th, starting the second semester, we're looking at a synchronous experience for uh, high school. Okay, my question is, is that an all day synchronous learning or is that just mo half day for cleaning still in the afternoon? Well, at that point in time, we're still doing the cleaning. Okay. It's remote learning. So where we are right now, it's asynchronous and we're looking to shift it to synchronous so that we can get more time I, with teachers and students. I, um, I will tell you that I am concerned in seeing D and F lists at the middle and the high school level. I want to make sure that we're engaging kids and keeping them engaged. Oh, I'm just questioning how the day is going to open. It's going to be synchronous learning all day Wednesdays or just morning so you can still clean and, and have uh, PPTs or whatever in the afternoons. I don't know. What, are your thoughts going full day, Michael, synchronous learning? Yeah, we'll, we'll have an, an adjusted schedule so it won't be full day every day. I don't certainly want to put kids okay. on the screen all day long. Again, I think right. the other okay. thing here is with our leader leader model the the wow. track here is we want to increase time of engagement for students and staff, okay. but I don't want to dictate how to do it. So let me give you an example. One of the things this year we talked about was the idea of social emotional learning. So what I'm looking at with regard to that more synchronous time on Wednesday, being able to do small group instruction, being able to do one to one right. instruction for students that need it as the caller reference today or mm -hmm. also being able to do larger group activities where all are engaged. Um, you know, I think we're, we're talking about getting kids back in. My ultimate goal is five days in all, all week. Um, yeah. right now we're I'm not, not complaining. I just want clarification on how new, the new Wednesday is gonna look. That's all. Sure. Elaine, teachers will still be home teaching and kids will still be at their house learning on Wednesdays. Oh. Right, but the teacher will be on the screen now. Correct, but so that I doesn't affect it. the cleaning is all I want to let you know. The buildings okay. are still empty. Okay, that's what Just I was put, I think we all need. I think we all need clarification on that, Chuck. Yeah. My well, understanding was, is I'm hearing the teachers are being requested to go into the building and cleaning will be done at night. Can that be clarified? Yes, absolutely. We are encouraging for the synchronous Wednesdays. We're encouraging staff to go in. We're not requiring it. Even as it is right now, John, teachers have the ability to be able to go in. I do have some staff members that have shoddy internet service at home and find it more fruitful to be in on remote Wednesdays. Um, that is typically done in conjunction with the principal and the cleaning is done outside of the time period where that teacher is in the classroom. Are we mandating it? No, but we're certainly encouraging staff to be able to have access to their classrooms where they have all their materials. Can I add a couple of comments on this whole conversation? Um, because I've, I've heard some concerns from teachers in the area and they were things that kind of brought me up first. So shifting remote Wednesdays from um, you know asynchronous learning days to synchronous, I, can't, I, I do understand as a parent the, that kind of need. While I do like some of the, the free kind of choice boards that we do at the elementary level, I could totally see it. My concern is with the teachers. So what I'm hearing from teachers, and this is a lot of teachers from Weathersfield on top of teachers that I talk to all over the place right now is I'm really, really concerned. I feel like on those Wednesdays, what I'm hearing is this is the time that those teachers get to respond to all the emails that they're getting from parents, which I can only imagine, um, that they're they're using that time to collaborate on um, a lot of special needs, special ed concerns, meeting, meeting with paras, PPTs, 504 meetings, team meetings. So I feel like that time is time that's where are they going to be able to do that? Are they going to have to do that at night? Um, their student testing, helping students one-on-one -on -one, um, for extra help. Um, some of the teachers are doing these virtual lunches to enable social interaction among students, which 
from what you're saying might be part of this kind of synchronous type of thing and um, you know cross school and grade collaboration so some of the big while I understand and I as a parent I kind of get it I'm really worried that these teachers are getting really burnt out and I'm concerned that taking away some of the time that they would typically have in a normal school setting um, is going to put even more on their plate so I just wanted to share those concerns of mine and some I've heard from teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Ms. Granato. Uh, a comment, I do want to comment on the half uh, meeting I went to, but since we're on this right now with the teachers on Wednesday, I too have received many complaints. And um, we've heard so often here at board meetings how teachers are so stressed. Elaine has asked Michael so many times and the answer is yes. Um, and that's become my concern because we started this year saying we were going to use a social and emotional curriculum first. And then secondly, not that they were second in our minds, but that it was put second over a child's social and emotional well-being would be the academics. Now I'm hearing that we want a rigorous Wednesday. First of all, I don't think anything this year should be rigorous. This is a year that we just have to survive. The stress level is tremendous on families. It's tremendous on teachers. It's tremendous on administrators. Um, and I'd like to see or hear that the leader leader program was put into effect, that the teachers were asked what would be the best for these Wednesdays. Should they be robust or should they be a time where they can then communicate, slow it down, have a child who is not understanding a lesson learn a lesson. Um, we have to do it differently for a while. And I don't know what numbers you're following, Michael, to think the school's going to open in five days, but the numbers are horrible. They're horrible in the state. Um, and now, of course, England is bringing over this different virus that children, I hear, can catch. So there's so many things to be concerned about. My big concern is stress level because that's mental health. That's the mental health of our system. Now, I'd also like to tell you that not just um, mental health, but physical health. I attended a meeting for the HAT, the Hunger Action Team on December 11th. It was virtual, um, but we had a guest speaker, Trishna Mutamba, who is a Weathersfield messenger and PEP graduate. Now to refresh your memory, um, these community messengers are um, from our work with U United Way, they gave us a grant, and these messengers were trained to go out to their neighborhoods and communicate all the, uh, the facilities and the programs that the town has. Well, of course, that's all on hold now because um, there can be really no communication and the people they need to talk to usually aren't online. And um, so that will hopefully be up and running again. Chef Bobby from Chartwell spoke of how many fewer kids are actually in the buildings for breakfast and lunches. Um, but Chartwell's is still serving over 100 to 120 lunches per day um, in their outreach program. And something very interesting, we were also told that residents can put up little pantries um, to serve their neighborhoods. I guess this has become quite, um, I hate to use the word fad, but it has become an idea that's being um, brought to neighborhoods. There is no permit required as long as it's on private property, these little pantries. But you um, must check your website to see any of the um, details on that. And finally, news that the Connecticut Food Bank and Food Share would be combining their services because um, hunger has become a very serious problem in the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Granada. Anyone else? I'd like to jump in here. Uh, yes, couple, Mr. Healy. Go ahead. Um, I think it. I think it. We need to understand a couple. Come back to where we are and how this whole situation is being directed and who's responsible and, and the structure we're living under. Everything we do is being driven by data from the public health department in co consultation with our superintendent. 
And everything after that uh, is, is gonna require and has required a lot of patience and hard work by everyone, everyone, parents, teachers, etc. And I'm very sympathetic to what our teachers are doing. A lot of them are doing some great work, but parents are doing a lot of great work out there. They're trying to survive, survive economically. They're trying to have their kids learn remotely. I have said before, this is nothing new, that I think our public policy is mistaken on having our children in school full-time at a certain age. I applaud the superintendent for trying to get the, everyone back in school. Uh, there, you know, this pandemic and, and to speculate on what's going on in England is not gonna get us anywhere. We have to deal with the reality. The reality is that the, these, the children that may get it are not going to die from it. They're not gonna be seriously harmed from it. And we're taking precautions to make that so. The people that are getting sick can be teachers. We're gonna take care of that, but we have to press on. And this idea that we need to take, we can't, we have to be robust. We should be robust no matter what the circumstances are, not obviously to the breaking point, but I, you know, the remote learning as hard as we're trying is no substitute for in-class instruction. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. And we're gonna pay an extra price in this country and in this state over the next year or two with remedial education to make up for this time, this lost time. So I think the more we're robust and supporting people with our attitude of being robust, the children will be served better. And unfortunately, that's just where we are for us to say, well, you know, it's hard and, you know, we, we're, you know, we have to, you know, step back and, 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 and withdraw. I, I think that's, that's not the right attitude that we need to show parents who are sacrificing along with teachers to make this work. And I applaud what we're trying to do to make this work, but I don't think we need to be driven necessarily by the, a lot of this abject fear about what this virus is and does. We have, we have two, three potential um, vaccines that are coming along. I mean, you know, this, this, is a, this is a point where I think we need to continue the work we're doing and not you know, lull back. That's just my only, those are my thoughts on that. Chuck, I, may I uh, have some comments as well, please? Yes, sir. Okay, I don't disagree with what people are saying, but my, I do have some concerns that I'd like to share. And we talk about social, emotional uh, well-being of everyone, not just the student and, um, and the wellness of everyone. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, you hear everything out there about uh, burnout. And they had a big documentary on the news regarding teacher burnout and whether it be Google Meet burnout or Zoom burnout. People just need a time to uh, push back. And are we pushing something new? And we've never experienced a pandemic before. Are we pushing our teachers beyond their limits, beyond the point of where they, they want to do their best and they are doing their best. They want to meet every child's needs and they're trying their hardest to do that. Um, you know, so those are my concerns. You know, they are they getting permission to, you know, for a pause? You know, we, we you know, it, it, nothing gets a, a pause. You can't pause certain things, but, you know, are we practicing wellness uh, for our staff. I think that's a concern. And um, are our teachers safe? Are they well? Are they okay? I don't know that. I'm not in the classroom, but I'm, I'm concerned with, you know, uh, what's happening in the world. Um, and I'm also concerned about uh, were they in, uh, given the opportunity for their input on the Wednesday change? I think that right there would be something. And plus there's so much time expectations in a year, in a day, in a week. Um, and are we allowing them to prepare for all the things they have to prepare for? So uh, there's no, I'm sure no answer for that. And I think we have to be aware that we have a great district, we have great teachers, 
Uh, we have a great administrative uh, team going and trying to do the best. But I think we are working for the future, but I wanna make sure that um, that future is not gonna burn our faculty out. I think we've got some concerns and I want them to be heard. I hope they are being heard. And, um, you know, there's just so much time that can go around in a day. So I think those are um, some questions that I think we need to address as a district. And I hope that through the superintendent and the, the groups that are discussing this, I don't know that, but I hope they will. And they are, because in uh, every industry is doing that. Any other comments? Well, since John um, said that he would like and I would like to hear, um, and Bobby brought up the topic that we worked with leader leader and I would just like to hear I'm sure there's a leader leader group at Highcrest web I know there are can we have some data on how they felt or what they're feeling now that it started um, on the Wednesday's synchronous learning just some information that it's going well that it's not as or it is too stressful whatever it, you can gather Mike so we could have some I don't even know if they were in consulted, as John said, on this, uh, how they felt about it. Not that it's their decision, but um, they did work to get a leader leader model. Bobby worked very hard to get that. And I'd like to have their feedback, or maybe you didn't have the time to do that I, I with all that's going on. But if you could send us back some feedback from um, each leader leader group on how they feel after it started or since before it started, that would be great. Well, again, Elaine, it's not starting until the middle and latter part of January. So there's okay. plenty of time to plan and it's not being dictated as to you will do this. Okay. Obviously, our teachers are professionals and they know exactly what needs to be done in terms okay. of supporting kids. But I'm going to be very upfront. And I said this earlier in the meeting. I am worried that we're going to be losing kids. I get the stress, but I'm worried that we're going to start to see kids disengaging. We are heading to January. We have been out of school in one way, shape or form since last March, the middle part of March. Yep. And what am I going to do if I don't start to increase the, the time where, where we're interacting with our kids and we're engaging our kids? What happens when I do get to the point where we're doing full in-person learning? I mean, my ultimate goal here is to get our kids back in. I want Tiago to be in five days a week I want him to be socializing with his friends in the cafeteria. We have to build to that point at some point in time. We've been uh, hybrid since the beginning of the year. We had a very clear plan as to beginning to open at the elementary level in one grade, middle and high, starting the first week of November. All you need to do is to go to our webpage and look at that graph and you can see the number of cases. I, I, I mean, I'm hoping, I, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to entertain at least starting to bring back our youngest learners at some point in the middle part of January. I'm hopeful that we're getting to the peak and we're going to see this, this high period of infection start to wane so we can get kids back in. Because I think what we're dealing with right now, the stress of teachers, it's trying to balance. Well, I'm in and then I'm out on this day. I have to plan for this. I mean, our teachers are doing yeoman's work to try and keep our kids engaged. There's no two ways about it. Our administrative team has been second to none in terms of driving this district forward. And again, I can't say enough about our parents. I talk to parents on a daily basis who are stressed out trying to balance work and trying to balance remote learning, trying to figure out where the child is going to have childcare on this day and that day. Everybody is stressed to the max. And the idea of doing this and making this shift to more a more synchronous approach is again, to continue to engage those kids that we're losing. And you know, we talked also about the collaborative time. I, I get and understand the collaborative time for teachers. I think it's critically important. We provide it during the week through the contract with 180 minutes of prep time. In addition to that, the idea of special education PPTs and 504 meetings. We've had from September through this today to do PPTs. I know tomorrow it's a minimum day and it's a remote learning day. I have schools that will have PPTs tomorrow right up until one o'clock. So that certainly won't change. We'll still have the ability to do that. But I am concerned about those kids that are not logging on. I'm concerned about those kids that never turn their camera on. 
And on those Wednesdays where it is just synch asynchronous and they're on their own, that concerns me. And I just think we need to look at it from a perspective, how do we raise the bar a little bit? I'm not talking about a full day of, you know, in front of the computer all day. But I am thinking a little bit more of a 10 minute check in and you know this the choice board is and I heard this directly from a parent help your mom. I don't understand what that is from an educational standpoint I, I just I I'm not seeing anything quantifiable to that and that's the expression that I got directly from parents so again I folks I think it's really trying to strike the balance and we're not doing it tomorrow we're talking about developing it over the course of the, the next three to four weeks. Mike, I have a question. Do you think kids will not be engaged anymore by being forced to spend more time on the screen while home on Wednesday? I, I don't know that, John. I'm not sure. It's going to depend on each individual child. Because I know learning at home and learning in school are two different types of things and two different styles. So, um, you know, I, I think we just need to examine that a little bit more um and you know we're not here we're just here to be messengers we're not here to be critical mm -hmm. um and you know I, we're all in it together so i just think that we are you so. know we're we're all trying to do our best for everyone totally agreed any other comments tiago tiago i apologize it's okay, but I guess I wouldn't be doing it justice if I didn't say how many uh, students and some teachers, but mainly students have been uh, coming to me and uh, telling me about, you know, um, their viewpoints on um, the removal of uh, Wednesdays. Uh, many of them see, again, reiterating as a connection between teachers and parents or teachers and students. Uh, but at the same time, I've also heard from um, a few of my peers who are, uh, who have concerns, I guess, over the grades and the uh, grades of their uh, of their uh, peers as well. So I can definitely see Mr. Remitt's, uh perspective and viewpoint on how, um, you know, maybe another day, uh, how the movement of uh, asynchronous to synchronous day on Wednesday could be beneficial. So I, I can definitely see both perspectives, but uh, still many of my peers are, uh, uh, I guess discontent with the uh, removal of uh, the Wednesdays. Thank you, Ms. Granado. Okay, just... oh. Chuck, you calling me? Yes, Ms. Granado. Um, Michael, no one um, would ever criticize you for not working, uh, you know, a yeoman's job here and getting the system to work at the best it can during this very trying time. My worry is that we were told the social and emotional component would be first, and that the mental health of teachers, families, and students would be our number one priority. And I think we're starting to forget that. There's almost a panic setting in that we think our kids are getting behind academically. Um, I don't know what we can do about that until we're all vaccinated or we're all taken care of that we can then get back to school. In the meantime, we really have to make sure that we haven't stressed these kids out so they don't engage and we stress teachers, teachers out so they don't teach and we do the same thing to our administrators. And that's my point in all of this. Mr. Cassio. Yes, I, I might've missed it. And uh, Mike, you might've already said it. I know, Two weeks ago, we, I asked the question about, are we gonna be doing the same uh, after vacation as we did in, at Thanksgiving? Um, what, are we gonna do remote learning the week after school starts? No, we're reopening, as I said earlier, we're reopening on the 4th of January with cohort number one, starting on Monday. Okay. I just wanted to verify that. I, I might have missed it. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Riley. I think it's just, uh, it's a mixed bag. It's so hard because uh, the kids need to be in, in school to learn better, but that's, uh, 
near impossible with uh, with how the the cases are, are rising. And I think it's it's always been stated that the that the safety of the the teachers and students is uh, is paramount. Thank you. My internet froze for a second. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. So a couple of comments. I think we've talked a lot about social emotional and I wanna commend the superintendent on the way he's bringing back students and we're still in a hybrid. And I think that's putting our students and staff members social emotional at the forefront. There's a lot of pressure to bring back more students and he's held stead, steadfast on when it's safe. And, there's, and if you look at the metrics, as Ms. Granado said, the state isn't looking very safe right now, but yet we have districts around us who are back full-time K-8 and we're still holding to our hybrid model, which I think says a lot to our social emotional needs of keeping the buildings as less crowded as possible. But I, I definitely support Wednesday's synchronous learning and I'm a teacher and I know all the stresses they're going through and I'm a parent and I know the stresses of parents at home, but our kids need to be engaged in learning on those Wednesdays. I've seen it at my house where there's no engagement and very little going on. And that's a concern of mine. These kids need to be in school five days a week. And I do understand it's a pandemic, but it doesn't need to be rigorous. And I do agree with Bobby on that point. Well, let's not fall too far off the spectrum on how rigorous we get it, but we need to be engaging them five days a week. And I'm happy to hear we're gonna be looking at getting the younger students in. That's definitely a push. K-1-2, I, I feel bad. They need to be in school. They need in-person learning more than they do online for sure. All right, seeing no other comments. Happy holidays, everyone, and happy new year. Everyone stay safe. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Th thank you, a second. Second. Thank you, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. next year. Bye.